Well guys, here we are. This is what I would call my happy place. Now, you guys probably have spots that you really like going to. This is mine. Now this, I call it the hillbilly hideout, but for lack of better terms, it's just a place I go to to cut wood. So here we go. I'm gonna bring you guys into the hideout here, or into the mill, because I'm gonna show you what I do in order to get it set up for the year. Now, what you're seeing here is basically where I left it last winter. I've been in here a little bit with the snowmobile when the snow was probably about this high. You weren't able to hardly see much. You probably could have seen the track, but there's some drifts and whatnot. But what I'm gonna show you today is everything I go through in order to get the mill up and operational for this year. I've already got some logs ready to go. So these logs came from the bush here. I skidded them out, loaded them up. They're on the bunks. So I talked about these bunks in other videos. Now you can actually see them. So the logs are sitting on them. And basically what happens now after I get the mill set up is I'm gonna go ahead and put the runners out. So these things I call the runners. There we go. Bit of a job there. These are the runners. These runners, as you can see, create a bit of a ramp from the, from the bunks onto the mill. This is what I use to roll the logs onto the mill without having to actually lift anything. So after you see me get this mill set up, you're gonna see me use those bunks to roll the log on here, and then I'll go through the rest of the setup so you guys know just what I do in order to get things ready to go. So let's get after it here. <clears throat> okay, first things first, let's grab my tools. Brought a few tools out here. Probably the most important tool, aside from my uh, my gas to fuel that mill, is the level. So I brought out my six foot level. And what I'm gonna do with this in just a second, you're gonna see me use it whoop, in order to uh, make sure that the, the bed of the mill is perfectly flat. So it's not so much important to me that the bed of the mill is level as much as it is flat. It could be on a slight downward slope, upward slope, side to side, doesn't matter too much. But I need all these different levels here to be the same. Now in a perfect world, I would have a single long I-beam of steel on both sides in order to set this track onto. I don't have that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the level. And what's going to happen is I'm going to be looking... <clears throat> I'm going to be looking for the space between the bottom of the level and the top of this rail here. So if I look, notice how there's a bit of a space there. I don't know what I'd say there, maybe a little more than 3 16ths, maybe a quarter. And over there it's, it's touching, so it's touching here and here, but not here. So that indicates to me, this one is slightly higher than those two, or this one is slightly lower than these two. Regardless, a little squirrel out there or something. Regardless, I got to bring these all up to the same plane. If I didn't, here's the issue. Check this out. See that mill? What's happening is all four of the wheels, the four, the four wheels here, they need to touch the tracks at the same time. If this platform here, this bed of this mill is not flat, it's not going to, and you're going to get this rocking motion. Definitely not ideal. So I'm going to get down to work here. And why does it go why does it go out of flatness i guess well we've got lots of winter here as you know here in canada as a result the frost coming out of the ground can throw off my base a little bit because all this is is a piece of wood and a block on the ground if i was getting serious here maybe i would put <clears throat> maybe i would put a uh, a foundation in um down below frost line but i'm not there let's have a look here so this one's still Showing me it's low. And that makes sense. So this one to me is probably a little high. And so what I'm going to do in order for this one and this one to be flat is I'm going to bring this one down a bit. And how I do that is with these adjustable feet. You can see I got some adjustable feet. If we get right under here and you have a look, you see I've got a nut on the bottom. That nut I'm going to loosen off. I can then drop this rail downwards or I'd loosen off the top one in order to bring the rail upwards. So that's the next step. So 
So I'm just loosening off the nut that's directly below this rail to allow the rail to sit down a little bit. Because keep in mind, I want this to go down a little bit, right? In order to take the high spot out and make it flat with those two. <clears throat> so I'm gonna reduce that or lower that down slightly. And you notice the difference? Look at this. Notice how it's not, it's not rocking anymore. So that tells me these three are in the same plane. Now it's important I check both sides of this rail here, or both, yeah, both sides of the rail. So that's good. Let's look over here. See, that's why I'm checking both sides. I lowered this side with these two, but I have to do the same to that one. For those of you who are watching this and are probably saying, don't you pour a concrete slab? Well, the trails I take to get here aren't very conducive to uh, doing work like that. I don't have a generator and there's no hydro out here. Nice pop, or as my fellow Americans would say, nice soda. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> I know I'm getting close here. And when you start getting close, here's what I do. I use the mill itself, and I just check by putting a bit of rocking motion on it, whether any of the four wheels here whether they're not touching. If they're not touching, they'll stop spinning and they'll also make the, make the whole, make the whole mill rock. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna leave it at that for now and we'll move on to the next step. Once I get this all straightened up, what I gotta do is I gotta reconnect the lines to the water tank. Now this water tank, I get the water from those barrels over here. The barrels are basically hooked to eaves troughs on the roof of this place because I don't want to carry water out here all the time. So I fill up the barrels with rainwater. Then I have a little drill pump, which you'll see me using at some point. Fill these up. Check the air filter on this. And you'll notice here, uh, if you have a 14 horse Kohler uh, with your mill, You'll, you've got basically settings for your air filter. So whether you're you're uh, going to be milling in cold or warm temperatures. I'm not milling in cold temperatures anymore. And so I'll turn this after I check it. Let's have a look what we're dealing with here. Oops. Okay. So see what I was talking about? The sun for warmer temperatures, snowflake for colder. That arrow, because it's going to be warmer, it's going into uh, summer here, hopefully at some point, it's going to face the arrow. So, so it's got fuel, check the air filter, and I think what we'll do next, we'll look at, uh, we'll look at getting some water put in here. So it's pretty simple, you basically take the top off, make sure there's no mice poking out of there. I don't see any. Get some water, pump it in there, and uh, that'll be that. So, here we go. Okay, so if you're wondering what pump I use, this one is Miles Craft Drill Pump. I got this off Amazon.ca. I don't know what it costs, but it works pretty well. Just got to follow the arrows on the back. Arrow pointing this way means that's the way the water's going to flow. So, got this little section of hose here. It's relatively short. And I got a longer section. Okay, so that one's there. Here's my other section of hose. And what it does... Whoop, what it does is go down into the barrel. That's where I draw the water from. And you guys can see here, got it rigged up along the back, pulls off the roof down this into the, into the barrel. <clears throat> Hook the other end up. Right, Pooch? Right. Dog's pretty smart. He's standing downwind right now, probably smelling something. He's a pointing dog, small monster lander. Anyways, back to it. So pump's hooked up, barrel's hooked up. And all you do, really bring your little cordless drill out. Okay. That's ready to go. So I'm just going to pull this mill down here so I can do some work. 
Okay, then just fill her up. Okay, we're full. So that's that. So that's water. Then I just take the drill back to the uh, shop. And when I'm done, I just hang this thing up for next time. Okay. And just so it doesn't create a siphon and suck all the water out of this, I just pull it out. Throw this on. Okay. Well, that's that. Other things I do, take my WD-40. I'm spraying some of the cables for the throttle, making sure that's greased down well. You'll also notice these cables here. These cables are vital to my height adjustment, so I'll take a rag and I'll wipe all that off. Or in my case, an old hay and sock. Give that a good wipe down, and I'll grease her up. Basically any moving part that I have, I, I oil as well. Like this is the tension for the blade. I'll oil that, oil in there, oil here. If you're from Canada and you know everything rusts here, I would basically oil everything. Okay. The blade's not looking good. That'll come off there. One thing I don't oil, I don't put oil on the blade. Now, I guess we can have a look at it right here. When you're looking inside here, and I should have cleaned this out before I put it away, but when you're looking inside here, there's the rubber bands that go into grooves on the cast iron wheels here now I want to have good connection good friction between the blade and that rubber or polyurethane or whatever it is if I put oil on that this blade has the potential to slide around on there I don't want it to slide because obviously I don't want the blade to come off so I don't oil this blade at all I don't touch the guides with anything I rely on the water for lubrication there the water just in case you're you're uh, you're wondering comes out of the tank goes through the valve there and it drips down this little tube onto the blade itself so I don't touch anything with oil in there that's basically it for my setup aside from that oiling and making sure this is flat I'm ready to go water fuel air is good everything's oiled I think that's it so hopefully that gave you guys some good uh, good insight into what I do to get ready for the year um, the next step for me is more or less to fire this thing up and actually get down to it just before I forget though as with every engine you own always good practice to check the oil sometimes I forget and I assume the oil is good but we all know what happens when we make assumptions this one looks good right now I just changed the oil not too long ago I might have actually changed it before it went to bed for the winter so that's why the oil looks so good so I think we're good to go